Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am retired Chief Master Sergeant Chad Balance, and I will be your narrator for today's retirement ceremony. Formal military ceremonies begin with the presentation of our national flag, known as the posting of the colors. During posting, everyone please stand. Military members in uniform will stand at attention. It is appropriate for civilians to place their hand over their heart until the playing of the national anthem is complete. We ask that you please silence all of your electronic devices for the duration of the ceremony. We will begin shortly with reality. I will begin now, but I need to do something, Jane. Chief Musselman requested me to be fun, so I will have some fun at this time. As a man of my stature, obviously I must have a, a podium that fits who I am and fits Rob Musselman because this started at Airman Leadership School and that's where our relationship started 20 years ago. We started our own language 20 years ago. I didn't curse at the time. I used things like beep, click, click, you know, <laughs> words like ace, Mitch, things that we replaced our names with. So as I recall him, I call him Mitch. He calls me ace. He's my best man. He was at my wedding, he had one job, really. My uncle was mentally handicapped. He stood beside him as my other best man. Uh, and, and it was a hot day in Michigan, very hot day. It was a beautiful day. My bride was gorgeous. Rob had that responsibility of taking care of my uncle. My uncle then sat there and cursed. He dropped the F-bomb about four times in front of my pastor. Rob couldn't stop him after one. He said, it's so fox trotting hot, fox trotting hot, and kept going. Rob did nothing. Obviously, he did something in the Air Force as a chief, but hey, he did something. <laughs> that day, Connie caught the bouquet from my bride, and one year later, they were married, and so on and so forth. So a story goes there. I had the opportunity to provide the speech, the toast, and I failed to do so. So I brought the toast for them today to make sure that I corrected that deficiency in which I failed to do at their wedding. I also will share with you, as a chief, Master Sergeant retired, and as watching this chief that's going to retire, they're going to say a lot of things. Major King is going to say a lot of great things about my best friend, my best man, my brother. But what you will not hear is a story about me. You see, I was a struggling tech sergeant, and when I say struggling, I was at the depths of life, uh, just going through a divorce, struggling through everything that a person could ever go through, and the Lord brought Chief Musselman, Rob Musselman at the time, to be a part of my life. I literally, the 25th of October, put a, a, a weapon to my head and thought about killing myself, and the very next day, Rob was introduced as saying, I need a roommate because I can't handle Connie. <laughs> but I got them together, and then they married shortly thereafter. So, But he saved my life. He has made the difference. If, if you think about a career, you'll hear about accolades and things of that nature. But when you impact and, and bring something to that, I have four beautiful children. I myself, a retired chief, and hopefully impacted a lot of folks. I know that as we go through this, you'll hear the impact of what this man has done to me. And I bet that story will reflect on all of you. And our presiding officer is Army, so we're going to give him the cue to have the rest of the family come on out. Yes, sir, Major. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the invocation for my dad's retirement. During my dad's retirement, it gives me great honor to be saying the invocation. Now that he's retired, can I hear an amen? Amen! <laughs> <laughs> I personally think that there are many men and women that pushed and prayed, my prayed for my dad. He also met his best friends, Rich King, Chad Balance, and Rick Waterbeck. My dad also met my mom. I'm very happy this retirement is one day before my birthday, also because I got checked out of school. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? <laughs> my dad has made it to the top, a chief. Can I have a round of applause? Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for being my dad and, you know. Hope you cry today. <laughs> Can we thank Kayla and Alina again? Great job, ladies. Great job. And really, this is what it's all about for Rob. It's about the family. So it's my pleasure to introduce Chief Smotsman's family members and other distinguished guests celebrating with us today. Please applause enthusiastically after each name is called. We are here to honor, we are honored to have Chief Musselman's wife, Connie. Their beautiful daughter, Alina. Chief's mother and father, John and Mary Musselman. The Chief's aunt and uncle, Richard and Joan Smith.
We also have with us Chief, Chief's sister-in-law, Joe, their nephew, Lance, and niece, Storm. And, and finally, his brother, Eric, and wife, Debbie Musselman. For these, we don't have to clap quite so loud, but these are our distinguished military guests, and we honor them today for their attendance today. And I can do that as a retired chief, because there's nothing we can do to me. The Vice Commander, Air Force Technical Application Center, Colonel Ralph Bordner III. Well, that's pretty good clap. Command Chief, Air Force Technical Application Center, Chief Mass Sergeant Michael Joseph. <laughs> Command Chief, 45th Space Wing, Chief Mass Sergeant Scott King. <laughs> Command Chief, 920th Rescue Wing, Chief Mass Sergeant Shane Smith. <laughs> Commander, 709th Support Group, Colonel Gary Korn, Jr. And finally, the Deputy Director, Systems Development, Colonel Richard Mendez. <laughs> Chief Musselman and Connie wanted to also give a very special thank you to all of the family members and friends who travel far distance to be here from the local area. His fellow Chiefs, First Sergeants, Team Patrick, and Cape, uh, Cap, Cape personnel for attending today. <laughs> there were no drinks last night, I promise. None. One, one, one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege, privilege to introduce our presiding officer, Major Richard King. Sorry about that. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Outstanding. Well, I'm happy to be here. Um, before I go ahead and get started with the formalities, Rob, this is your last chance. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> I know the rest of the room is saying yes, but I'm asking you. Are you sure you want to do this? I agree. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Colonel Bordner, Command Chiefs, uh, gentlemen, uh, for being here and supporting Rob on this momentous occasion and day. Uh, I'd also like to, to identify and uh, and recognize Rob's family. So Connie, Alina, Mom and Dad Musselman, Aunt and Uncle Smith, uh, Joe Figueroa, Lance, Storm, and lastly Chad Bounds. Each of you have made Rob who he is today and you've given him to us to f defend our grateful nation for the past 26 years. So I want to say thank you for that because you have all made him who he is. Okay, so first off, I just want to want to throw my one, uh, one and only Army jab out here. Um, so in the Army, before you retire, the night before you retire, I mean, normally you'll get together with some, some of the guys you worked with. Is that better? Okay. Everyone hear me? All right. So normally you get together some of the guys you worked with, smoke some cigars, drink a little bit of whiskey, kind of reminisce. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in the Air Force, so maybe you guys can clarify for me, but uh, I don't know what the tradition is for Chief Master Sergeant the night before they retire, but Rob went and got a Manny Petty. Um, <laughs> that, uh, and I will take that home with me, and that, that's going to feed into the whole stereotype. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but on a, on a serious note, um, today's an exciting day. Uh, I know Rob is a little bit nervous and uh, a little bit anxious. Uh, I think he's a little bit terrified as well, and probably not for the same reasons you think. Uh, see, I've known Rob for over 20 years, and um, he has no idea what's going to come out of my mouth over the next 10, 15 minutes. That's probably why he references security clearance. Um, I have many honors in my career doing promotions, re-enlistments, enlistments, things like that. Um, but this is probably one of the greatest honors I've had in my career. Um, Rob's been in the military for over 26 years, so he's known a lot of people. So either they're all retired or he picked me for a good reason. So um, that is quite an honor, and, uh, and I thank you for that, Rob.
Chief Master Sergeant Rob Musselman. Let that sink in just, just a little bit. Did you ever think you were going to be at this level 26 years ago? I think there's some other people who disagree. Right, Mom? <laughs> so you've climbed to the, uh, to the top of your profession, the top of your field. I mean, the 1%. And that's, that's not a small feat. So that, that's uh, something you'll always be able to take with you. So today is your day, brother. We're here to honor, honor you and honor your sacrifice, um, the sacrifice your family has made, and basically highlight your career. Can anyone tell me the difference between... Can anyone tell me the difference between a retirement and a roast? Uh -oh. <laughs> no, nothing. nothing. Not a thing. <laughs> I, picked, I picked Tall Proffers for a reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's still on. Y'all are on the... So I, I, I've received a lot of additional training since the last time we hung out, Rob. So... <laughs> That's just Army training, though. <laughs> Oh, man. You understand I have the mic. <laughs> you understand I get it loud. <laughs> I still outrank you. <laughs> okay, so Rob was born and raised in Ocala, Florida. Okay, not too far from here. Uh, he entered the military in 1993. It's kind of, kind of a while ago, right, Alina? Uh, Air Airman Lampson, are you here? What were you doing in 1993? I wasn't in the combat duty Outstanding. Just putting put in context his career a little bit here. To help the younger folks in the, in the crowd uh, put everything into perspective, gas prices were $1.11. Uh, Guns N' Roses was still together. Yeah. President George Bush Sr. was president. Our base pay as an E1 at the time was $753.60. That's like a car payment now. <laughs> MTV still played music videos. And, uh, and for, all the, uh, for all the, lack of better terms, nerds in the room, um, let's see, Intel introduced the first Pinium family 32-bit processor in 1993. So, and for all the, the old timers uh, that have been around a bit, the F-4 Phantom was still in service at the time. So Chief Musselman asked me that I not go over his assignments, a decision he'll probably regret because it's not going to make the speech shorter. It's just going to add more comments that I'll reference from, from our past. So, uh, so let's begin. So after tech school, Rob was assigned to Hill Air, Hill Air Force Base, Utah, where he cut his teeth as an as a administrative, I'm sorry, where he cut his teeth as an information manager for the next five years. His next duty assignment was probably his most significant duty assignment was at Anderson Air Force Base, Guam. Um, it's kind of where he met me, but uh, more importantly, where he met Connie. So now I'd like to give you a little bit of insight to the man behind the stripes. Alina, did you bring your earmuffs? <laughs> no. Okay, so, so I want to tell you, just go do the earmuffs, okay? All right, so Rob has always been an outgoing and, uh, and kind-hearted hearted gentleman. In the first few days after arriving to Guam, I was a single parent, uh, newly divorced, had my son in tow with me, and uh, showed up on a small, hot island, didn't know anybody. Uh, within the first two days, Rob asked me to, to go out, brought me into his circle of friends, uh, took me out for, for many adventures from there, and began the a long bond of friendship. <laughs> so some of the things we did, uh, we spent a lot of time at the Tree Bar, the Onyx. We did some professional development sessions at the Golf Spot. Uh, we even went fishing. Had a lot of fun while we were stationed there in Guam. Uh, Rob's normally a mild-mannered person. Um, Rob also has a passion for hockey, which we both share. Um, he enjoyed playing hockey and, and watching hockey. Uh, my son, again, was four years old at the time. Um, I bought him a Nintendo 64, 
and one of the first games we got was NHL. So he's playing hockey. Um, I've never seen Rob more enraged in his life on a regular basis as uh, every day he would come over and he would play hockey with my son Jaden and he would lose. <laughs> and he would lose and he would lose. And there was a few, few bad words mentioned at the time, but, uh, but it was a daily thing. And he would come over specifically to just to play because he wanted to win. Um, after about a month of this, I finally had to tell my son, I'll give you five dollars. You gotta let him leave, let him win, <laughs> at least once a day. So that's the only way. That's the only way that worked out. So Rob and I, we were like we were like Batman and Robin. Um, we we did a lot of stuff, hung out a lot. Um, I was Batman, of course. Um, <laughs> and, and Rob was he was literally Robin. And when I say literally Robin, uh, there's something probably most people in the room don't know that um, Rob's, Rob's name at birth was Robin. So, <laughs> so that, that was one I wanted to throw out there. Thank you, my Musselman. You, you throw it in there. <laughs> As I mentioned before, Rob brought me into a circle of friends. Um, part of that circle was, was a beautiful young lady named Connie. Connie was a, was a lot of fun. Uh, we all hung out, and they finally, finally started dating. Rob got smart. Um, and we talked before about how Rob was funny and smart and, um, and kind. Rob's also kind of a little slow. <laughs> um, it took Rob seven years to marry this woman. <laughs> but I think we can all say that um, the county, county will definitely say that it was worth the wait. So they've, they've got a beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful Alina. But I think we can also, uh, we can also universally say that Rob married up. Okay. Um, so, so Rob got Connie a beautiful wife, and, um, and Connie, well, she, she just got robbed. <laughs> And to be honest, that's like my best joke for the evening, so it's just going to go downhill from there. As Connie will tell you, again, it was worth the wait. They married in 2006. So Chief Musselin uh, was forward deployed in Kuwait in 2011. I'm sorry, September 11th of 2001, uh, at the beginning of everything. So the day they'll change all of our lives forever, uh, Rob was there in Kuwait, and uh, and began his efforts starting, starting from that point. Uh, he also deployed under Operation Enduring Freedom, New Dawn, Inherit Resolve, and Resolute Support. His most recent deployment qualifies as an Air Force, R I mean, as an Army R&R &R tour as he was deployed to Keesler Air Force Base, Biloxi, <laughs> Mississippi. Don't quite know how that works. Um, maybe someone can share that with the Army and we can work on uh, supporting that a little bit more. Uh, let's see, his last OCONUS deployment tour was uh, 2005. Uh, Aaron Lamson, where, where were you at the time? Third grade. Third grade, Rob. <laughs> On a serious note, uh, Chief Musselman has distinguished himself at many levels, uh, being selected as the uh, conference coordination team for the Secretary of the Air Force, very senior level position, also being selected as a member of uh, IG team. It's also something that, again, if they heard some of these stories, might not have made that team. But, uh, <laughs> but Rob did those jobs and, uh, and truly always stood out amongst his peers, uh, being selected and then also in the execution of those positions. Rob has mentored uh, countless officers and enlisted to achieve their goals as leaders and, uh, and develop their styles and leadership styles. Rob's, imp Rob's inspiration began in ALS. He served on the ALS staff, although not as an actual instructor, but he saw the quality and the impact that the instructors have on young airmen at that time um, and decided that that's, that's um, something he wants to be involved in and to be a, a key point and key integral piece of his, his professionalism and his leadership. He carried this on throughout subsequent assignments uh, become a key part of who he was. 
Chief Musselman spent a great deal of time teaching young airmen how to identify personality traits and those of others. So as anyone and any, any senior leader can identify, not every soldier, airman, respond well to getting yelled at. Some respond really well. I can tell you the infantry guys, when we yell at them, they pretty much do what we say. Um, some of the intel guys, uh, they get a little bit teary, and we gotta, <laughs> gotta work a little bit different angle with them. So you have to look and kind of see what fits with different people. Rob was able to identify this and, and decided working with the DISC program to uh, teach that, teach the different personality traits and allow soldiers, to, soldiers and airmen to identify themselves, okay, what is my personality trait? Where, where do I excel at? And also to identify the, the people that work for you, their personality traits and how to work that into your leadership style and how to effectively get them to do the mission at hand. Many of you don't know this, but um, Chief Musselman, today is his retirement. Yesterday, he was actually teaching one of these classes. So uh, when you talk about someone that truly, truly works to the end, uh, that, that's Rob. And I'm sure uh, those airmen will, will appreciate that throughout the rest of their careers. The age-old debate always remains. Are leaders born or are they developed? Well, I believe Rob was born as a leader. He's not exactly humble all the time because I asked him today, I was like, hey, do, do you think that, uh, did you ever think that you would have the impact on people when you first started your career uh, that you have now? He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we can check off that, that person. Is there a portion of that personality trait thing of the humbleness? The big eye? Okay, so you get a little eye. Um, but yeah, I, I truly believe he was, he was born, born a leader and developed himself and fine-tuned that through his next 26 years. But that doesn't come, just because you're born a leader doesn't mean you're going to amplify that and convey that well to others. So it took the, the senior leaders, the officers, the enlisted uh, throughout his career to kind of help develop the man that we have here and the leader we have here today. So I truly hope in your retirement that you do find a job where you're able to continue to mentor and develop people, because uh, that's something that, that's needed regardless. Rob did want me at some point in time through here to, uh, to get a shout out. Um, some of the music he liked growing up kind of started off with A1A. You, you wanted to make sure that got Sounded off at some point in time during the during the ceremony. <laughs> okay, um, one of the biggest things Rob's had a lot of trials and tribulations through his life, um, many different levels, many many different aspects. Uh, it's been his faith in God that has truly pulled him through uh, many of these adventures, many of these uh, problems and 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 uh, challenges he's had. So that that is something he's held true to. Um, and he stayed true to his, his beliefs and convictions, and that's something that I, I truly commend about you, Rob. Let's see. All right, in closing, um, probably mentioned earlier, Rob was uh, my first salute as an officer. You gonna, you gonna cry yet? Do you have the tissues? It's your turn. So I would like to ask Rob uh, if formally if I could be your last salute. Colonel Korn, would you please come forward for the formal medal presentation? Please rise for the presentation of the Meritorious Service Medal presented by Chief Mass Sergeant Muscles Commander, Colonel Gary Korn, Jr. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Meritorious Service Medal to Chief Master Sergeant Rob W. Musselman, 4th Oak Leaf Cluster. 
from 15 October 2017 to 30 June 2019. Chief Master Sergeant Rob W. Musselman distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Superintendent 709th Support Group Air Force Technical Application Center, Patrick Air Force Base, Florida. During this period, Chief Musselman led three squadrons and one detachment consisting of 400 military and civilian staff in support of WING's Global Nuclear Deterrence Mission. During his tenure, he served as the acting WING Command Chief for 88 days, where he led one, directorates and, one directorate and 14 detachments. Chief Musselman enabled the WING, the Windows 10 installation, consisting of 65 cyberspace knights personnel upgrading 3,000 computers across three networks, resulting in the first WING within the 25th Air Force to compete, complete the, dif the Defense Department cybersecurity mandate. Additionally, he empowered the support squadron ACES as they directed logistics resupplying 350 352 sites, 35 countries, and seven continents, sustaining the WING's $380 million global United States atomic energy detection system. Furthermore, Chief Musselman accompanied the Technical Maintenance Squadron Krakens on the Black Hawk helicopter mission on top of a snow-covered Alaskan mountain to the replace a nuclear sensor protector destroyed by wolves. Finally, he was essential to the center's utilization by leading the stand-up of the first ever support group. The singular distinctive accomplishments of Chief Musselman culminate a distinguished career in the service to his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Thank you, Colonel Korn. And now as the next part begins, you'll remain standing. Let's get ready to retire. Retiring out of this corner right in front of me, Chief Master Sergeant Musselman with a record of 26 years, six months, and 23 days, weighing in a little bit more than when he joined the Air Force but still a man of steel. I present to you the Major. Attention to orders. The Department of the Air Force, Special Order Number Alpha Charlie 004037, dated 11 January 2019. By order of the Secretary of the Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant Rob W. Musselman is relieved from active duty responsibilities effective 30 June 2019. Signed, General David L. Goldfein, United States Air Force Chief of Staff. Please be seated. Chief Musselman will now receive the certificate of retirement. It reads, certificate of retirement from the armed forces of the United States of America to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that Chief Master Sergeant Rob W. Musselman has serving his country faithfully and honorably was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of July 2019. Signed, General David L. Goldfein, Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, and Colonel Chad C. Hartman, Commander, Air Force Technical Application Center, Patrick Air Force Base, Florida. Chief Musselman will now receive the Certificate of Appreciation from the President of the United States. It reads, Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America. Chief Master Sergeant Rob W. Musselman, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed, force, armed forces and the purposes for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms are there. My best wishes to, 
to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander in Chief. Chief Musselman will now receive the Certificate of Appreciation from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. It reads, Certificate of Appreciation from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Chief Master Sergeant Rob Musselman, I am proud to join your friends and your family in congratulating you on your retirement from the United States Air Force. The achievements and contributions you've made throughout your career are indicative of the core values of our great service. Your retirement is well deserved, but your selfless contribution will be sorely missed. On behalf of all airmen, thank you for your faithful and devoted service to our nation. As this chapter in your life closes and a new one begins, I hope that the years ahead are filled with more great memories and continued success. Signed, Khalif O. Wright, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. That's a lot of reading. I apologize if, as I stumble over anything. At this time, we would like to ask the better half to please come forward to join her husband in a tradition for the spouse to place the Air Force retirement pin on their spouse's left lapel to symbolize the transition from active duty to retire, retire status. Connie, would you please do the honors? Make it stick. At this time, Major King will present Ms. Musselman with a Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Air Force. It reads, in grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this Certificate of Recognition to Ms. Connie Musselman for the, the commitment and numerous contributions that have made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Given the first day of July 2019, signed General David L. Goldfein, Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, and Colonel Chad C. Hartman, Commander, Air Force Technical Applications Center. Major King will also present Ms. Ms. Musselman with the Certificate of Appreciation from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. It reads, Certificate of Appreciation from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. On behalf of all Air Force Airmen and their families, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force presents this certificate to Ms. Connie Musselman. I join your spouse, family, and friends in thanking you for your numerous contributions and sacrifices you have made in support of our United States Air Force. Your dedication has, has given strength and purpose to your spouse's service in the defense of our nation. Signed, Khalif O. Wright, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Short guys can hide right under there. You guys didn't even see me. Major King will now present Mrs. Musselman with the Military Spouses Medal, which reads, the spouse does not wear a uniform, yet they serve their country. They do not acquire nor wear ribbons showing where they have been, yet they go. They did not ask for the duty to perform, yet they were unwaveringly served to their best of their ability. They serve yet are not honored with trinkets or pieces of cloth showing their service. The burning candle signifies the lonely nights you have spent and that you have kept the home fires burning. A symbol with no beginning and no end. The ring around the candle flame symbolizes the underlying flame of love for your spouse. The love. The image of the rose is for the unwavering devotion that you have shown for your spouse and their service to their country. Let them flow, girl, let them flow. <laughs> 26 years, you put up with this guy. You can, you can do this. This medal is gratefully given to those that do not ask, those that stay on the home front so that their spouses can serve for, the, for they are prou so proudly serving their country. Did, did the chief crack any tears? We've got a lot of money riding on this. 
and I'm all the way from Carolina, so I come out one of my money. <laughs> At this time, I would like to ask Miss Alina Musselman to please come forward to join her daddy in a special presentation. At this time, Chief Musselman will present Alina the Military Child Medal to his daughter. It reads, throughout the years of your life, you have made sacrifices and you serve your country as much as I have done. In your loving way, you quietly shouldered the heavy burden that you were asked to carry. Most of the time, you could not understand why I was not there, but you quietly hid the tears, courageously putting on a smile and defiantly promised that you would support me. You were then now, as now, one of the most important parts of my life. It is your love that enabled, enabled you to assure me that what I was doing was important. I missed so many holidays and countless occasions while you were left at home to pray, not worry, while I was on difficult missions like Keesler Air Force Base, Mississippi. <laughs> you can't make this up, folks. You didn't have to say goodbye to your friends because you haven't moved in seven years. You didn't have to change schools like my daughters, four and five, but you're good. Your resiliency and self-confidence, Alina, while in support of your dad in Mississippi, gave him strength. I am proud of you, for it was your love and support that sustained me in those difficult times eating crawfish near the man-made beaches. There is no way in my mind that I could have ever been a success in the military without having the support your understanding, and most importantly, your unquestionable love. Thank you for always being there for me. Alina, love, Daddy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Mossman will now present his family with some gifts for for his participation, appreciation, uh, for doing the following over the years. You can't, again, you cannot make this stuff up. Making him breakfast, lunch, and dinner, doing the laundry, buying him really, really hot, hot sauce, watching Food Channel late at night, uh, discipline me, discipline him when he would sneak out of the, the house through the window, roll the car back, uh, you know, and not turn it on and try to sneak out, and not disowning me when he sold that Mustang that you gave me a really, really, really good deal on. So he's asking for forgiveness through the, a couple of gifts. I hope that doesn't sting. <laughs> We're a good family. Don't worry. It's all good. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? That is brutal honesty from a young kid. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Mike Joseph would like to take the time to present a, a, on behalf of the Air Force Technical Application Center, on behalf of all three of the chiefs, it says. I didn't write this. I just come to read. Okay. So when Rob found out about that, so when uh, Rob found out he was uh, coming out on the uh, chief list, uh, we sat down and talked, and what I told him was, I said, as chief, you get four days. You get the day that you find out that you make chief. You get the day that we have your recognition ceremony. You get the day that you pin on, and then you get the day that you retire, which is today. Those are the only four days that get to be about you. The rest of your time is taking care of your airmen and the mission. Mm. Now, let me tell you something about Rob. Rob took that to heart. Rob had already done that before, uh, but Rob came in, and anybody that has spent any amount of time working with Rob, he knows it's all about taking care of his airmen and the mission. Wow. He has epitomized that from the time that he's been in there, and it's something that the commanding chief going down and him being a superintendent that I have counted on and he has done a phenomenal job. Uh, the other thing is when we sit down and I talk about this, I said the military is a lot like a bucket of water. You can put your hand in while you're in there, you can make all the splashes and the waves, but 
But once you pull that hand out, it's automatically like you were never there in the way it feels. The military set up that way, and it has to be. Because we will get somebody that's going to come in and fill in for Rob and do the job. But what Rob does and where he makes his impact is how well he's trained, mentored, and developed his subordinates and his fellow soldiers. That's where he's made his mission. And if you talk around this room, every single solitary one of our airmen probably have a good story on something that Rob has done. And he has made an impact. He will be missed. And he's going to be missed for that reason. So on behalf of the men and women of APEC, we've got a small statue. And it, it, while the statue is important, it's a quote that we have for Rob. It says, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but is what is woven into the lives of others. And nobody that I know of uh, could lie to that more than Rob. So Rob, I'm going to miss you, brother. And thank you for every shit. many times, hey, do you want somebody to present this to you? And I said, no, I bought it, I'll present it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, the folks from our organization got me, got me some nice gifts at, at our party, which I think they, uh, yep. from our group there, that's, that's a nice gift that we got, so I appreciate it from our, from our team. So, yeah, so here's the gift. Yeah, shadow box. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, retired Air Force Master Sergeant Rick Waterbeck will now narrate our flag folding ceremony. Sergeant Waterbeck and Chief Musselman Melt met as young airmen at their first duty assignment at Hill Air Force Base, Utah. One of only two that he had in his whole life. That's why I got him this. So he knew what it would be like if he went to Germany, what a license plate other than Florida would look like. So. <laughs> oh, the stories I could tell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members, members from Patrick Air Force Base Honor Guard will perform the flag forwarding ceremony described by the uniformed services as a dramatic and uplifting way to honor the flag on special days. Like the retirement of Chief, Ma uh, Chief Master Sergeant Musselman for his 26 years of service and contribution to the United States Air Force. The flag folding ceremony represents the same religious principles on which our country was originally founded. The portion of the flag denoting honor is a canton of blue containing the stars representing the states our veterans served in uniform. The canton filled of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted when draped on a pall in a casket of a veteran who has served our country in uniform. In the armed forces of the United States, at the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out, and at the ceremony of revelry, run aloft as a symbol of our belief in the resurrection of the body. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red, six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, 
white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally, a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes wavering after the British shelling of the Baltimore Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our U.S. Air Force, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1976, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is your responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their co comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, representing for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. The Honor Guard will now present Chief Musselman, the flag of our country. Chief Musselman would now present his wife, Connie, the flag of our country. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Rob Musselman, United States Air Force, 
retired. It may look like I'm prepared, but I'm not. <laughs> You're thinking you didn't even look prepared. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> I've got some thank yous to do here. That's the one thing that I definitely have, uh, have written down. Um, Thanks to the leadership staff for being here, Colonel Bordner, Chief Mike Joseph. Thank you for those words. It's been great working with you. Uh, Chief King, Scott King, Chief Shane Smith, Colonel Korn, and Colonel Mendez. I appreciate you all. Um, Charles Holt Holtgren, Master Sergeant Charles Holtgren. He's, a, he's, he's over there. Uh, he was a lead for this event. He put in a lot of hard work. And Charles, I, I, I can't even put it into words, man. It's, you know, one of the special days of uh, my family's life, man. And, and you've made it flawless. So thank you. And for the teams that you led. And Major King, I tell you what, I'd, I'd be here for 20 minutes, but nobody wants to stay that long for me to uh, get you back and have the last mic, last uh, thing to say. But I just, you know, I, I appreciate you, man. You're, um, you're, you're one of my brothers, and um, I appreciate the kind words that you said today uh, about my family. You actually put some effort into it, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but we can catch up later. I love you, man. Uh, and Chad Balance. Chad over here. Chad's my brother. I was his best man. He was my best man. I narrated his retirement ceremony, and he paid me back the favor. So, um, yeah, I could talk on and on about Chad. Chad's my brother, uh, always has my back. You know, we all have at least one or two of those uh, type people in, in our lives. And so, Chad, I love you, man. And uh, Rick Waterbeck that just read the, the flag folding ceremony. As somebody from my my uh, my first base, I met Rick at at our first base, and you know I was an airman basic with zero stripes on, and he was a senior airman. He had three stripes, and I can remember telling my friends at work that I had a senior airman friend. <laughs> it's a big deal. So who has three stripes on right now? Anybody have three stripes? Look at that. People look up to you. Hey, Kayla Bowles, raise, raise your hands, Kay, raise your hand, Kayla, for that national anthem. Wow. <laughs> she did a dry run yesterday, and I needed that, that roll of uh, paper towel. But Kayla, just awesome job. And thanks for your dad, uh, Brian Bowles, uh, next to you there for uh, uh, helping with us to have you come and be such a part of a very special day. And we also, also with helping out with the, the ceremony, Jennifer Jenkins, uh, Seth Runyon, Mike Nolan, Mike Kearns on the Honor Guard, leading the Honor Guard team, Gerard Peterson and Dolly Ramos doing our, our proffers over here today uh, and our escorts for my family. It may have only been, you know, 20 seconds that you walk to the seat, but that's a, that's a very important 20 seconds of, of walking my family to their seats. Uh, br again, Brian was an escort. Um, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Cook, Sergeant Runyon, Sergeant Aragon, and then our Honor Guard team. Again, um, we've got Corey Hicks, Josh, Josh Tiller, um, Airman Romeo. Also our protocol team. Almost finished with the thank yous here. Lieutenant Rizzo and Sergeant Baldwin. You know, 
it's so important. It may sound long that you've got you got to go through this thank you list, but people want to people want to hear that thank you. It's important to let people know that they're appreciated and they're not just doing it to do it. So, um, our our support group team where I where I've worked. test for the for the past year uh, Colonel Colonel Corn my my boss I, I tell you what you if you don't have a trusting relationship with your boss you don't have anything period and and I just appreciate the Colonel Corn um, uh, letting letting me serve it was so easy when we had our the initial feedback where he has to give me my expectations on what to do every day and he said this is simple just take care of airmen Okay, that I mean, perfect, right on. I'm out the door. That's is that it? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm out. So thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Mr. Cobb, Chief Redman, Captain Belk, Lieutenant Palmer, uh, First Sergeant Scott Giroux, Master Sergeant Dupe Dupree, and Mrs. Huffman. To you all made my life easier. The times that I would go and stand in front of your desk and say, Hey. <laughs> I would try not to do what you working on, but they knew I would, I would come there with a look, and they knew they are probably going to have to help me out, so I appreciate you all. The support group team, maintenance squadron, cyber squadron, support squadron, debt one, um, I, I appreciate you all. Officer enlisted civilian, it doesn't matter. We, we are all one team, and um, we've, we've done our best to work together, and, and I... Um, just challenge you all within within the support group to uh, continue to work together, to look for opportunities to work together, and to knock down any barriers that could impact our teams. Team AFTAC, so Air Force Technical Asia, Air Force Technical Application Center, is still it's been seven years, and I still don't even know how to pronounce it. But then if you ever wanted me to try to explain what we, what we do in AFTAC, I just, I, I got nothing. It's, <laughs> it's uh, nuclear treaty monitoring. <laughs> okay, so now you know. <laughs> Out of town guest, I tell you what, it's, uh, it's humbling I, you know, I thought I had it all together and, until I saw some folks come through the door, um, un unexpectedly even. And this guy, raise your hand, Shannon. No, he doesn't, he doesn't like, definitely doesn't like the fanfare. This guy just shows up. We were in basic training together. So it's a big deal to have somebody from, from my basic training flight, flight 099, we graduated actually 8 December of 1992, and, and Shannon and I did that together. So it means the, the world to have you here, brother. <laughs> Sh Shannon retired as a master sergeant a few years ago. So, uh, you know, thank you for your service, brother. Fellow chiefs, we've got some, the majority of the chiefs are up here in this, in the second and third row-ish. And uh, I tell you what, what an absolute humbling honor it is to serve as a chief master sergeant. It's so, it is so humbling. And I tell you, when you try to put it in perspective of what it's like to be a chief master sergeant, it's really hard to do. You almost have to experience it on your own to really get the to really grasp the uh, I, I don't I can't I don't even know how to put it into words. So to give you an example, as a senior master sergeant, the the rank that you would have before chief master sergeant, if you were to walk around the base, if you were to walk through this this retirement, if you were to walk through the the base exchange, you may walk around all these people that you say, see in here, and they may not even say anything to you. But once you have that third stripe on top, you are more than likely going to be greeted by, by everybody that you walk, you, you walk around. So that's something that you have, to be, you have to be prepared for. You always have to be ready to speak. 
And that's one thing, one of my staples that I stand in my soapbox on is to always be ready to speak. And, and as a chief ma master sergeant, you're just afforded so many opportunities to, to be in front of teams and, and everybody's listening. And I, again, I didn't, I didn't really understand that until I put the stripe on. And then I'm like, yeah, I remember when a chief master sergeant would walk around me, that, that was a big deal. So every day in order to be in any rank, but even more so as a chief master sergeant, this is what you have to do. You've got to let, you've got to let the air out of your head every day. You must let the air out of your head every day and not let yourself get in front of anything else. And it is always airmen first. As, as Chief Joseph said, you only have four days to yourself, everybody else. It's serve, 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 period. Thank you to my church family that's here. I appreciate all from uh, Calvary Chapel. And I also have some uh, fellow Toastmasters in here. If you don't know what Toastmasters is, it's a worldwide public speaking group. And uh, it's kind of cool because you can go there and uh, most of the time when you go to a meeting, you get to speak and then you have an evaluation. So you're always growing. So I know I'm being evaluated right now. <laughs> Almost finished here. So before I get to my family, let me make sure I get this stuff out. So what's next? I often, I often get asked, what, so what's next? I, I don't know. I don't know what's next. I know that God has a plan for where I'm going to go next, and so I will continue to seek that every day. We will be staying in, in this area, uh, and so I'll ask anybody out there that has a job. <laughs> and I, hey, listen. Let me take this off for effect. I'm serious. <laughs> I really need a job. I got a yard to cut. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Have I missed anybody? Oh, I'm going to get to you. You like that question. Like, it's, it's a question you, you don't even know how to answer because you don't even know what I'm talking about. Come on, I gotta throw a little little curveball in there. All right, to the family. Um, see, I've been to so many retirements. I'll get to my family in a minute. So many retirements. The first one was John Gentry. And in all those tr retirements, everybody would wait until this moment. He's gonna talk about the family. And is he is he gonna need the uh, is he gonna need the Kleenex or not? Well, get to the point, Musselman. So thank you to um, Lance down there. Lance, my nephew, Storm, Joanne, his girl, Lance is uh, girlfriend Hayden down there. Thank you guys. Um, my brother Eric, or Joanne, Eric and Debbie, I appreciate you all coming over from uh, uh, across the state of Florida. And you know, we, we may not see each other all the time, but just like close family friends, when we see each other, it's, it's connected right away. I, I appreciate you being here, Eric and Debbie. Uh, and Joan and Uncle Dick. Um, I tell you what, that, you know, as, as, I, as I grew up in a child, uh, the major, a lot of my Christmases were, and holidays were at your house. And um, so many memories of, of how much you guys poured into my life. And I will always appreciate that from you all. And if you heard earlier on about the, the Mustang that, uh, that I sold, they gave me this plush 1977 Mustang II mahogany dashboard Mustang when I was 16 years old, 77,000 miles on it, and they just thought it was the sweetest car and the sweetest deal. I traded it for a banged up 80 Camaro two days later. <laughs> And I'm surprised I haven't heard about it on this trip. <laughs> but I, lo I love you. I love you very much. Uh, mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is uh, mom and dad. Uh, the, the, biggest thing, the biggest thing in my life that anybody could ever do for me is pray for me. 
and that's every day from my parents. Pray for me every day. Selfless, Dad, you're selfless. You set the example for everybody. You have made me a man. You've allowed me. That's how I, I stand up here today and able to talk in front of these uh, fine group of, of individuals. And Mom, you, Mom, you're an absolute prayer warrior. Um, always saying the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, and it is. Uh, and, and I could go on and on about how much I love all of you. I love you, I love you, Mom and Dad, and I appreciate you every second of the day. And I'm so glad that you guys are here. Come on, Muscleman. Get it right, Muscleman. We need a little laugh there. Yeah, to my wife, Connie, I tell you what. <clears throat> um, yeah, keep talking. It helps with the tears. <laughs> strongest woman, strongest woman on this earth. Encourager. Balances me. Keeps me straight. Keeps, me, keeps my eyes and, ear and no, ears and nose clean before I go into work. She does. <laughs> Why is she the strongest woman? When we had Alina back in 2007, Connie was seconds from death. Seconds from death. I th and we're on the other side of it. How many, many, how many years later, Connie battles um, stage three breast cancer? Connie was there uh, when I was battling anxiety and depression and ready just to, um, you know, I, I just started a master's program. Like, I can't even concentrate. I can't even do my papers. Well, why don't you just call your professors and see if they'll work with you? And they did. Turning point in my life. And she's there every day, and she doesn't complain, and she balances me. And she is a God-fearing Christian woman. And, and I'm just happy and blessed to walk through every day with you, babe. All right, Alina, your turn. You are such a strong little girl that you have all of your mother's traits. And you're a leader. And you've, you've, you've shown that today that, you know, by coming up here and speaking at your dad's, graduate, your dad's retirement. I wish I would had graduation on my mind. And you also have a lot of traits of your dad. You are really cute. <laughs> and you're witty. And you, you make people laugh, like I just did a minute ago. I love you, Alina. You are right here. I made it. I made it. It's not over yet. All right. So that's why I said it's over. <laughs> yeah, one of my downfalls, and that's why I go to Toastmasters, is sometimes I screw up the uh, the script, the uh, the closing for uh, for a speech. Like I was speaking the other day at the Airman, I got the opportunity to speak at the Airman Leadership School graduation. Everything was going on good, and then I got to the closing, and I just like stopped. <laughs> and everybody was staring at me, and I had to do some stupid movement to get the, somebody to take over the mic, and it was just kind of this awkward thing, so. <laughs> That's all I got, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now sing the Air Force song, which con will conclude Chief Musselman's retirement ceremony. The words of the song, if you don't know them, are on the back of your brochure. After singing the Air Force song, the Musselman family will have a formal receiving line to congratulate and send your best wishes for everyone who was invited personally to congratulate him and his family. 
You are invited also to stay behind for a light lunch and refreshments. On behalf of Chief Musselman and his entire family, thank you for attending today's ceremony and have a blessed day. Off we go. Off to yonder. Off to yonder.